So along with some of these changes to the maternal cardiovascular system, um, along with those changes, we um, also create the opportunity for some complications to occur. And one example of a complication, um, a cardiovascular complication during pregnancy, is uh, something that's referred to as preeclampsia. Now, the term preeclampsia um, actually refers to, um, if, we, if we make a break in the word, it's um, pre meaning before, and eclampsia, which actually refers to um, a toxemic seizure that women um, with this condition can actually um, experience. And so, you know, once this seizure happens, the um, oftentimes it's it's a life threatening complication, um, and it's it, it has a very poor prognosis. So the term preeclampsia refers to um, a constellation of symptoms, including high blood pressure, that tends to precede um, a full blown eclampsia or seizure. So preeclampsia, so obviously catching preeclampsia is very important and treating it aggressively is very important. So preeclampsia complicates about 3 to 5% of all pregnancies approximately. Um, it's characterized by hypertension, and this is a hypertension with, um, that was not pre-existing before pregnancy. It's a new hypertension with pregnancy, and it also with it, it you um, pass protein in the urine. So any woman who's ever been pregnant, um, at every single one of your prenatal appointments, you, um, you give a urine sample so that they can test your urine for protein, right? Because at every, um, at every prenatal appointment, they're looking for even small amounts of protein in your urine, which could be an early sign of preeclampsia. It can actually happen before hypertension appears. So preeclampsia typically develops after the 20th week of gestation. Okay? So um, usually the, and we're talking clinically occurs. So basically the signs and symptoms, the hypertension and proteinuria, tends to not become apparent until after the 20th week. Now, because preeclampsia is a clinical diagnosis um, diagnosed using clinical observations like hypertension and proteinuria, there's obviously a variety of potential root causes of um, appearance of hypertension and proteinuria during pregnancy. So the exact pathogenesis um, is somewhat unclear, probably because there are groups of patients with um, different ideologies, different problems. But the majority of cases, the pathogenesis is thought to originate actually very early on in the early invasion um, of the trophoblast cells during implantation. So for the, for the majority of preeclamptic cases, the problem was actually impaired implantation. So the, the predominant theory right now is that um, during the process of implantation, the um, trophoblast cells experienced an inappropriate suppression of, maternal, of the maternal immune sy system. So that process of the decidual, decidual reaction and deciduation, right, where those decidual cells released interleukin-2 in order to mask those invading trophoblast cells so that those trophoblast cells can actually invade very, very deeply um, into that spiral artery layer of the uterine wall. Well, in preeclampsia, there was something that went wrong with this decidual reaction, and there was an inadequate release of interleukin-2 and an in inadequate suppression of the maternal immune system that causes an inflammatory response by mom against these invading trophoblast cells. So that the trophoblast cells, as a result, fail to invade deeply enough right? um, and fail to fully remodel the spiral arteries. So with 
um, inadequate remodeling of the spiral arteries, it leaves those arteries um, responsive to vasoconstrictors. Okay? They're not those very um, low resistance vessels that remain um, dilated all the time. And if I just show you this slide for a moment, in normal pregnancy, which is drawn um, in the upper portion of the slide, basically this um, box represents this area is the myometrium of the uterine wall. This is the decidua, which is the endometrial tissue um, and the maternal portion of the placenta. And this is really the um, fetal portion of the placenta. Okay. So the invasion of the trophoblast cells, these um, dotted lines represent trophoblast cells. Um, in a healthy normal pregnancy, these trophoblast cells will implant and they will invade very, very deeply. They'll go um, entirely through the endometrial lining and into the myometrium so that they can completely remodel these spiral arteries and turn them into low resistance vessels that cannot respond to vasoconstrictors. Okay? If you notice here, the solid line over here represents vascular smooth muscle, right? And in here, this is the endometrium. So if you notice, these trophoblast cells have completely replaced the lining of these spiral arteries, okay? which is why they're not responding to the vasoconstrictors. They no longer have the kind of smooth muscle lining their walls that would, would allow them to respond to a vaso. Uh, constrictor. In preeclampsia, the thought is, is that the trophoblast cells, as they were invading, they were basically stopped by a maternal immune response. Okay. And so they failed to penetrate or the to invade deeply enough, and they failed to fully remodel the spiral arteries and the spiral arteries remain unremodeled and fully responsive to vasoconstrictors. So then later, later as the fetus is growing and the fetal tissue, the requirement, um, the blood requirement of the fetal tissue is increasing, okay, the fetus is going to experience a certain amount of ischemia because of the um, spiral arteries that are unremodeled. Okay. So this ischemia that the placenta and the fetus experience trigger the release of vasoactive um, factors. Okay. And we don't exactly know which factors um, they are. We don't know the identity. But we know that the placenta and the fetus release these factors into maternal circulation and it causes constriction of maternal vessels. Okay. So the um, implantation is impaired, the trophoblast cells don't invade deeply enough, okay, and you don't get spiral artery remodeling. That later causes fetal and placental ischemia and the fetal and fetus and placenta in return release factors that constrict maternal vessels. And the thought is, is that's going to cause maternal blood pressure to go up, which is going to increase potentially the blood flow to the, to the uterus. Okay. But that is the, this constriction of maternal vessels is what brings about the hypertension. And that hypertension um, is what's bringing about the proteinuria because it affects the, um, the glomerular um, capillaries at the level of the, at, of the kidneys. So we will um, learn more about preeclampsia um, during the uh, presentation that's coming up. Okay, so another um, consequence of um, pregnancy on the maternal cardiovascular system 
is that doing something as benign as laying on your back, being in the supine position, becomes actually quite troublesome for pregnant women, especially as the pregnancy progresses and the size of the baby um, gets bigger and the size of the uterus gets heavier. So women who are in the supine position, and this is worse for some women than it is for others, but women who are in the supine position, the weight of the baby in the uterus presses against the abdominal vena cava. Okay. The abdominal vena cava is taking, um, carrying blood from the lower extremities back to the heart. So as that baby and uterus press on the vena cava, which is just a vein, right? It's not like an artery that can resist being pushed against. So as it gets um, compressed by the uterus, blood flow through the vena cava um, is lower and you get less um, cardiac return um, or return of blood to the heart. And as less blood gets returned to the heart, um, venous return to the heart is reduced. As venous return goes down, so does um, cardiac output and so does perfusion to the brain. Okay. So women in the supine position can feel lightheaded, they can start to feel nauseous, okay? They can start to feel um, uncomfortable symptoms as a result of a reduction in blood flow to the brain. And they can even um, experience uh, hypotension where the blood pressure drops because of that decrease in cardiac output. And they can even experience syncope where they actually um, lose consciousness because of the um, reduction in cardiac output and perfusion to the brain. Okay. So basically, um, the supine position is um, definitely not a position recommended for women during pregnancy, um, and it's certainly much worse for some people than others.